We have caught the wolf by the ear and are afraid to let go. Thomas Jefferson, kind of. Yes, Thomas Jefferson, founding father, had a bit of the poet in him, as we saw in the American Declaration of Independence, even though he fearlessly plagiarized the most famous line. <laughs> Yes, yes. Uh, well, well, we'll go easy on the old boy because his next line is even more intriguing. There's justice in one scale and self-preservation in the other. Self-preservation. Have to choose between justice and self-preservation. Does that sound familiar to you? What happened to our tigress? The House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is like a sick kitten these days. Is that what's happening? Has she become a sick kitten in this age of Donald J. Trump? Or is it something else entirely? Yes, yes. Put not your faith in princes. The good book tells us that Psalm hmm, 146, something like that, yes. The next line's even more fun. Put not your faith in the Son of Man. What? The Son of Man, that's Jesus. Yeah, what are the many metaphors for Jesus? The Son of God, Son of Man. Put not your faith in the Son of Man. Put not your faith in Jesus. <laughs> Somebody better work on their branding. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Benefits of a seminary education. Hmm. Yes, where was I? Oh, yes, put not your faith in princes. I am shocked. Shocked to learn that a politician and her promises are so easily parted. Oh, oh, they could have gotten him on taxes. They could have gotten a daughter of his on trademarks. They could have gotten him on emoluments. They could have gotten him on so many things. But no, 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 they're slow walking everything now. Yes, they're slow walking everything. You know, let's get his tax returns. But no, no, I have to make the case, we are told now. The case has to be made, the public case, for why the president should have to release his tax returns before they actually go after him. Oh, huh. well, in that case, I guess we're going to be here for another six years while you're busy making your case. <laughs> Isn't that right, Jerry? You said you were going to go after Brett Kavanaugh, but now you're just too busy doing the Russia collusion investigation. Oh, what is all this? It's starting to resemble more and more that god-awful compromise of 1876. You know that story, the classic tale of revenge with its very own femme fatale, its very own Ivanka. Yes, 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 yes. Her name was Kate Chase, and she was daddy's girl, just like our Ivanka is daddy's girl. <laughs> In ways more than one. Oops. Ooh. Where was I? Oh, yes, Kate Chase. Daddy was... Salmon P. Chase, Lincoln's Secretary of the Treasury in his wartime cabinet, the gadfly. Yes, yeah, Salmon P. Chase, named for a fish, and he was just about as warm-blooded. <laughs> yes, but daughter Kate overlooked his many, his many shortcomings and was absolutely convinced that daddy should be president and not that black baboon Lincoln. No, 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 no. But they had to wait until 1868 before Salmon P. Chase and Kate could actually realize their dreams. Not so, enter a villain. His name is Samuel Tilden. Samuel Tilden, J. Tilden, is um, sort of like John Kerry or Al Gore or Joe Biden, one of those guys who keeps running for president but never seems to get there, right? And he was a Democrat. <clears throat> what was Salmon P. Chase doing working with a Democrat? I thought he was one of the founders of the Republican Party. Well, it's the principle of the matter. I'm sure Kate would say that. Ivanka does when it comes to her trademarks, does she not? It's the principle of the matter. Yes, yes, yes. So anyway, there they were trying to get him the Democratic nomination, running against President Grant, running against General Grant, yes. And uh, he was betrayed by Samuel J. Tilden, yes, that New York political operative, threw the, the nomination to another, another wretch. 
She had to wait eight long years to get her revenge when Samuel J. Tillman was finally running for president himself against Rutherford B. Hayes. And what's interesting about it is it's just like the 2020 race I think is going to turn out. It will be a disputed election. You see, in 1876, neither candidate got enough electoral votes to win. So the, the election was thrown into the House of Representatives where the Electoral College rules hold sway, right? Every state delegation gets one vote only, right? No matter how many, how large or small the state, just like the Electoral College, right? And so that's what happened in 1876. Kate got her revenge. She maneuvered, she got her lover to throw the election to Rutherford B. Hayes, the Republican, and not to Samuel J. Tilden, even though he had more electoral votes than Rutherford B. Hayes. And what was the arrangement? What did Hayes have to give up? Well, he just offered to end Reconstruction. He withdrew the federal troops and had a stroke Jim Crow laws showed up, sprang up like mushrooms all over the Deep South, creating a black stain forever on American history. Yes, yes. So what happened to the Ivanka of that day? Will the same thing happen to our Ivanka? Will our Ivanka die alone, divorced, embittered, sick, dirt poor, having to sell turnips just to keep her affording her rent? <laughs> That's a thought. Anyway, where was I? Yes, yes, yes. The awful compromise of 2020. What air? What is Nancy Pelosi doing? What is this Chuck and Nancy show? I think. I think they're playing the long game. I I think that they are reading the same math that I am. They're seeing that Howard Schultz will split the ticket, that the Democrat will lose, and or what will happen is that Biden will get a majority. It will House will be the election will be thrown into the House of Representatives, where even though Nancy Pelosi is a speaker, even though there are more Democrats in the House, when it comes to that, they follow electoral college rules, one vote per state delegation, and Republicans control more state delegations than. Democrats do. So, yes, Donald J. Trump will win in 2020 and get his second term. Why are they betraying? So sorry, Kamala. Sorry, Beto. Sorry, Biden. Sorry, Bernie. You're all getting screwed by the Chuck and Nancy show. Why? Because these two are lifelong members of Congress and they want a bridge named after them and they know they need more acts named after them as well, more laws named after them. And to do that, they need to get the Senate out of Mitch McConnell's grubby little paws. Yes, yes. Hmm. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe they'll maybe they'll impeach him in a steep into his second term. Maybe not. Maybe he's just going to skate, right? Because it's just it's like it's like the Mueller report. What does the Mueller report and the high school prom have in common? After all that fuss and bother. Nothing happened. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Well, we'll have to see. So how will history judge Chuck and Nancy as sagacious public servants or gutless cowards? As wise old souls or treacherous snakes in the grass? How will history judge them? How will you? <laughs>